Hi everybody, Dr. Scott Keller with Synergy Chiropractic Spine and Joint Center. We're on 56th and Pine Lake in the Madonna Proactive Building, Lincoln Medical Park, all right? So today, we're gonna cover something right behind me. Everybody can see it and read it, the core. Now, we have to be brief. I can't get too complex on this because I could talk for hours and hours and hours about the core and the misperceptions of, of what the core actually is. Um, doing a lot of sit-ups, doing a lot of GHD things, uh, curls, crunches, whatever you wanna do, um, just not great stuff on the actual core. The core is vastly more complicated than what a lot of us think. The missing link to the core that a lot of people just don't even think about is actually the diaphragm. Diaphragm and also the pelvic floor muscles. So the easiest analogy I can talk about with the core is, is a soda can or a pop can. You have the top of the can, diaphragm, bottom of the can, pelvic floor muscles, and then the sides is everything around. So the rectus abdominis, the obliques, transverse abdominis, and then your back muscles as well. All of those have to be in proper positions and functioning properly in order to maintain a stable core, which is gonna then translate into maintaining more stable spine, lower back, hips, and up and down from there, okay? So one of the things that is not talked about enough is respiration, how we breathe, why we should breathe that way, and how that, and how that affects everything. So. Once again, not going to get into a lot of details, but I have a lovely drawing as well that I had to label so you could tell what it is, but we have uh, a side angles. If you were looking at me like this, the head, the ribs, and the butt down here, and I have two people here drawn. Um, last, last time or a time before in one of the videos, we talked a little bit about this anteriorly pelted, tilted pelvis. If you are someone who you can just see how, how your pelvis is rotated forward, maybe your lower back is chronically tight, uh, you sit a lot during your days, uh, all those kind of things can affect what we're about ready to talk about. So what happens when we have this anteriorly tilted pelvis and maybe a little bit of a rib cage flare here is our diaphragm is now at this angle, instead of being parallel, to the pelvic floor muscles, it's now up at an angle like this, and the pelvic floor muscles are pointed down at an angle like that. So we create this open scissors appearance is what we call it, basically this posture, okay? So if you feel like you stand like that, listen up, all right? This is very prevalent in, in our culture. Um, what happens with this is it screws up how the diaphragm and the pelvic floor can help stabilize the spine and the core you get this downward motion of the diaphragm that's now going that way, stabilization coming this way through the pelvis, and it just puts a lot of pressure on the front side. You get a lot of compressive force through the spine back here, okay? What should happen is you have a parallel diaphragm and pelvic floor, okay? You breathe, you stabilize, you get equal distribution of all of this intra-abdominal pressure, basically that maintains your spine stability. Um, again, going back to that pop can analogy, if you have the, the top and the bottom parallel and you have pressure on the inside, which is created when we breathe properly, you're gonna have ultimate stability, okay? What happens if you crack the can open, you push in one of the sides a little bit, you can smash that can like nothing, right? And that's exactly kind of what I'm talking about here. Usually on the indented side, which would be the back side where our low back is forward like this, it's gonna just get a lot of compressive force and pressure. So leading to a lot of injuries like disc injuries, sciatic nerve problems, all of those, all of those kind of things. So just a little background into the exercise we're gonna do today, what to kind of pay attention to and why we're doing what we're doing. Um, but we're gonna incorporate a, a, something else besides just core stability in this exercise, something called cross crawl patterns. Now, basically what that means is anytime we walk or we run, we don't do this, right? We do opposites. So opposite arm, opposite leg, either stabilizing or moving, the movable parts here. So um, that's an important neurological function kind of to get the two sides working together in these cross patterns. Um, so what we're gonna do is called a mini bear crawl, all right? It's gonna incorporate core tightness and stability, like we talked about just there, and then also cross crawl patterns, kind of reaching with opposite arms, opposite legs. Um, what you're gonna do is start on all fours, just like this, 
Okay, you're gonna lift your butt up towards the air, and then you're basically just gonna crawl forward, uh, left foot, right hand, and then opposite, just like this. Okay, from the side, my toes are curled, I'm lifting, and then I'm walking like this, okay? Now, the concept or the keys to this, before you even lift your butt up, tighten your core so your rib cage is approximated to your belt buckle, so you don't do this, you get here, right? Really feel that stiffness and that control in your core, all right? Then lift your butt up, and then try to walk uh, forward, okay? Now, the most common things we're gonna see with this that are not good, tighten the core, get your ribs down, lift your butt up, okay, is this. So you see people's hips shift laterally all over the place. You're not maintaining proper core control and you're definitely not maintaining proper hip stability. So what you need to focus on is imagine about an inch or two on each side of your hips, just a box that's following you as you go. You cannot touch that box. So if you watch me again, brace my core, get my ribs down, tighten, lift, and then forward, you don't see any of that lateral movement, okay? The other mistakes I'm gonna see, if I can get this stuff out of the way, from the side, is gonna be not getting a proper activation of the core, so people are gonna be like this with their back arched, or they're gonna be really rounded like this, which we don't want either. So get in this position, find neutral if you need to by kind of flexing and extending, tighten down, lift, and then opposite, opposite arm, opposite leg, all right? This is a fun one. Um, it's, it's pretty challenging if you do it correctly, and it can uh, be a great warm up to pre-exercise or just anytime uh, you know, you're sitting around and you just wanna start working on your core a little bit, okay? Um, if you have questions with this, this was a, a little bit of a more complicated one, I, I suppose, with uh, there's a lot of dynamics, a lot of things happening. So if you have questions with this or anything else, you can definitely check out some of my other YouTube videos. Um, Scott Keller, uh, you should be able to find some of my stuff. Um, we talk more about the breathing concepts, the core stability and how to do that. We just don't have time um, today to go over all of that. So if you have questions, once again, Scott at SynergyLincoln.com. Our office number is 402-328-2660. Good luck. Hope you enjoy this one.